What's up students, it's your boy the Philly Golden Teacher, your sensei of mushroom cultivation. Today we're going to go over the broke boy tech. So you want to grow mushrooms like this, this, or even this, but you're just too damn broke to afford a pressure cooker? Let me show you how easy it is to grow without a pressure cooker. Alright, so for materials, you're going to need the following items. A mason jar, any size you prefer. I'm going to be using four quart jars because that's how many I can fit inside my pot. You're going to need a large pot that will accommodate your jars. I'm using a 10 quart pot here. Any kind of whole brown rice. I'm going to be using three pounds of uncooked brown rice. You also want a colander to strain the rice into. Some aluminum foil. A spore syringe or a liquid culture syringe of your choice of mushrooms, a still air box, and a flame source. I'm going to be using a butane torch, but you can just use a lighter if you don't have one. Here's an ingredient list if you want to pause the video and take a picture of it. Alright, first step, you want to measure out your rice. Uh, rice will basically expand after it's boiled. So about four quart jars, I'm going to be using about two and a half pounds of uncooked rice. Uh, we're pretty much just eyeballing it here. Uh, if you end up with extra rice, that's okay. It's better to have uh, extra than not enough rice. Alright, now you want to fill up your pot with water. You want about twice as much water as you do rice. If you're unsure, just always add more water than you think. Because later on we're going to strain the rice anyway. Uncle Roger's not going to approve, but in this case, just trust me, it'll be okay. Alright, now set your pot on the stove and set your heat to high. We want to bring this up to a boil. I usually set a timer for about 10 minutes here. Alright, once your water is boiling, you want to add in the rice and turn the heat down to a medium low. You don't want it on a full boil, you just want it slightly simmering. Now you want to set a timer for 10 minutes. You want the rice to just be partially cooked, you don't want them full cooked. Once the timer is up, strain your rice into the colander and rinse with cold water. The rinse will clean off any starch residue as well as stop the rice from further cooking. You want the rice to just be partially cooked. You don't want any rice grains to actually burst. If you cooked it too much, if it started to burst. So then you end up with a mushy rice later in your jar. All right, now you want to let the rice chill out for 15 minutes in the colander. This, you want the excess water to drain out. Now it's time to load up the jars of rice. Uh, I fill it to about three quarters of the way full, so that way we can shake the grains inside the jar later during colonization. Uh, after you're done filling them, uh, put the lid onto each jar and sing a happy song. Alright, so I'm going to speed up the video here so you guys don't have to watch me load up everything. actually ended up with a little extra bit of rice because uh, I added in three pounds of uncooked rice so uh, the rest here I'm just gonna save for dinner later. Alright for this step we want to flip our lids upside down before we screw the band on. Now, some people would prefer to poke a hole in their lid and cover it with micropore tape or polyfill. I personally don't find that necessary. After screwing the band on we loosen it about a quarter turn. The lid flipped upside down would not seal the jar completely shut. This gives the jar the ability to release gas exchange during the colonization period. Basically, it's going to allow your mycelium to breathe without the need of punching a hole into your lid and covering it with stuff. Shout out to Unemployed EMT's guide for this tech. After we put on the lid, we want to cover them in foil. We cover the lids with foil because this will prevent condensation from dripping off of the pot lid and into your jars during the steam sterilization process. We don't want to be introducing any extra moisture into our jars. After putting on the foils, just make sure that the lids are loosened a uh, quarter turn. Right now we're going to line the bottom of your pot with a trivet. If you don't have a trivet, you can use a few mason jar rings at the bottom. You 
you want to keep the jars from touching the bottom of your pot. Now you want to add enough water to cover the rings or trivet. We don't want the water to go too far up past the bottom of the jars. We just want the steam to do most of the sterilizing. Now we turn the heat on to high and wait about 10 minutes until your water starts boiling. Once it begins to boil, put your lid on the pot and reduce the heat to medium low. Now set a timer for 90 minutes. Once your 90 minutes is up, you want to turn off the heat and let the pot and jars cool down on their own. Once everything is cooled, your jars will be ready to inoculate with your syringe. inoculating your jars. Make sure you sanitize and wipe down your workspace before doing any work. Turn off any fans or air conditioners as well. You want the air to be as still as possible for this step. When the jars are cooled down and are ready to work with, bring them inside your still air box. You will want to inoculate inside a still air box to reduce any chance of contamination from getting inside our jars. You can also do the same process outside of a still air box, but I do not advise for it. If you must inoculate outside of a still air box, you are doing so knowing that there's a higher risk for contamination to occur and it would not be my fault. So, you want to shake up your syringe and flame sterilize it before using. You're going to open up the jar lids very carefully and squirt a few cc's of liquid onto the side of the jar against the glass. The liquid will run down the glass sides. This will allow you to see mycelium growth much easier than had you injected liquid inside the center of your jars. Afterwards, put the lid back on and put the foil on and loosen up the jar bands a quarter turn so that gas exchange can take place. I like to keep the foil on because it can only help prevent any contamination from getting inside your jars. After you're done inoculating them, set your jars aside on a shelf somewhere to colonize. We will come back in a few weeks to check on our mycelium growth. Here's what the jars will look like after a week or two. The time in which this takes will depend on your spore genetics. For now, I'm going to finish the video out here. There's going to be another video after this showing you guys how to spawn your bulk board jars once they're fully colonized. We'll be spawning them to bulk model tubs, so stay tuned for that. I hope you learned something throughout this process. If you find the video helpful, feel free to leave a like. That way I know you guys are enjoying this content. Comment down below if you have any questions, and consider subscribing if you want to see more. Class dismissed.